Hello students, welcome back to our class. In the previous module, we discussed about uh, cuboid and what is the base area of cuboid and what is lateral surface area, total surface area, volume and a diagonal of cuboid. Now, we are going to discuss about a cube. What do you mean by a cube? See, coming to the cube, let us have a solid object where the face otherwise the base is a square and uh, all the lateral surfaces are also squares. What does it mean where length is equal to breadth is equal to height is equal to same units that is let it be some small a. Okay? If you want to learn about cube if you understand cuboid then definitely in a much better way you can understand cube okay so for a cuboid for a cuboid we already discussed about the base area base area of cuboid is equal to length into breadth and the lateral surface area of cuboid is equal to 2h times l plus b and total surface area otherwise surface area of cuboid is equal to 2 into L b plus b h plus L h and then volume of the cuboid is equal to base area multiplied by height and the diagonal of a cuboid is equal to square root L square plus b square plus h square. This is about cuboid. Since we are discussing about a cube, when a cuboid is said to be a cube, in a cuboid at least 2 at least two dimensions must be unequal, but whereas in a cube length should be equal to breadth should be equal to height. So, then only that solid object is said to be a cube. right? So, now let us discuss about a cube like a cuboid a cube has six faces as well as the number of vertices, number of edges, number of uh, faces should be same as a cube and cuboid right. So, coming to the base area of cube base area of cube see here cube is nothing but it can be called as a square based prism. So, the base of the prism should be in the shape of a square. So, what is the area of a square when side is equal to small a area of a square is equal to a square. So, that base area of cube is equal to a square and coming to the lateral surface area lateral surface area of cube is going to be 2 h into l plus b that means 2 a into a plus a 2 a into a plus a means a plus a is equal to 2 a into 2 a is equal to 4 a square this is by the formula, but we know that all the faces all the faces of a cube are squares since you have 4 lateral surfaces. 4 areas of squares is going to be 4 a square that is 4 a square as simple as that. And coming to surface area is equal to how many number of faces are there for a cube 6 faces each face is a square. So, that 6 into area of square is nothing but 6 a square is the total surface area or simply surface area of a cube. And coming to volume volume is equal to since a cube is also having a uniform thickness. So, that is why volume of cube is going to be base area multiplied by height. So, base area is equal to area of square multiplied by height is equal to small a. So, a square into a is equal to a cube is the warm formula for volume of a cube and coming to the diagonal. So, diagonal of a cube is going to be root over L square plus B square plus H square L square is equal to A square B square is equal to A square H square equal to A square. So, A square plus A square plus A square is going to be root over 3 A square which is going to be root over 3 times side or edge. So, root 3 times edge is said to be the diagonal of a cube as simple as that. So, if you remember what is a cuboid you can re remember and you can find the formulas you can derive the formulas easily for a cube also. So, please do remember both of them right and next coming to the next solid what is the next solid that you remember yes the next solid is a cylinder next solid is a 
cylinder so what do you mean by cylinder have you come across cylinder in your day to day life yes of course so the very first thing that comes into your mind is gas cylinder which is used in our house right so if you observe that gas cylinder are some you know uh, powder tins as well as some uh, you know recently uh, some perfume bottles are uh, coming to the market and some so many number of objects which are in the shape of cylinders so if you observe the shape of the cylinder particularly so the cylinder is in this shape okay so this shape is called a cylindrical shape cylindrical shape see here for a cylinder for a cylinder this is one base and this is one more base both the bases are two parallel and congruent faces both the bases are two parallel and congruent faces and here the lateral surface is a curved surface this is the lateral surface is the curved surface so then that solid object is said to be a cylinder so a cylinder is a solid object whose both the bases i am talking about both the bases whose both the bases are two parallel and congruent faces and lateral surface is a curved surface then that solid object is said to be a cylinder right since this is one circle and this is its parallel and opposite circle both circle has certain radius so this is what called radius of the circle and of course this is also the same radius okay and this is what the line segment joining both the centers of faces so this is the line segment joining both the centers of the faces is said to be the axis of the cylinder the axis of the cylinder are simply called height of the cylinder indicated by small h and one more very important thing here is if the axis is perpendicular to the base radius if the height is perpendicular to the base radius then those kind of cylinders are said to be right circular cylinders what do you call them right circular cylinder right circular cylinder otherwise it is not called right circular cylinder what do you mean by the cylinders which are not circular cylinders are not regular cylinders they are called irregular cylinders for example there is a cylinder like this okay so this is a cylinder if you once observe here this is the centers the line segment joining both the centers here it is perpendicular but here it is not perpendicular if you just cut across okay so then you can find out this kind of cylinders but these kind of cylinders are not called as regular cylinders they are called irregular cylinders here the cylinder is having its axis which is perpendicular to the base radius in both the cases so then this kind of cylinders are said to be right circular cylinders of course in our grade 9 we discuss about only right circular cylinders don't have to worry about irregular cylinders okay come to the point so if this is a right circular cylinder then these two are two bases you know both the bases are two parallel and congruent circles therefore the base area of cylinder is going to be area of circle so what is the formula for area of circle when radius is equal to small r is going to be pi r square otherwise pi d square divided by 4 when the diameter is given right so this is what is base area of cylinder and coming to the lateral surface area here in particularly in the case of cylinder it is called curved surface area but how to find the curved surface area of the cylinder it is pretty much easier when you take one paper okay a piece of paper and fold that paper okay fold that paper and make a cylinder which is empty inside of course there are no bases doesn't matter because we are going to find what is the curved surface area see when you make that paper into a an, an empty cylinder an empty cylinder and if you once observe this is what this is what is that curve on the top is what do you call this 
part what do you call this length this length is said to be the circumference of the base means the circumference of the circle what is the circumference of the circle this is 2 pi r got it and then this is also 2 pi r right both of them are 2 pi r only and this is what called the height so what am i doing here when i am cutting that paper after making into a cylinder when i am cutting along with its height then you can find out that cylinder after cutting will be a rectangle right see this is what is the height of that cylinder it would be h and this is what is the circumference after cutting made into this length that is nothing but 2 pi r so it is 2 pi r totally it is a rectangle whose length is 2 pi r and width is equal to h therefore area of this rectangle is considered as the curved surface area of cylinder so therefore the curved surface area of cylinder is equal to area of this particular rectangle area of rectangle equal to length into breadth right so length equal to 2 pi r and breadth is equal to h therefore it is 2 pi r h therefore curved surface area of cylinder is equal to 2 pi r multiplied by h is going to be 2 pi r h is the formula for area of curved surface area of cylinder hope you understand how to get the formula for curved surface area of cylinder right and coming to total surface area otherwise surface area of cylinder you know very well about total surface area the areas of all the faces come under total surface area all the faces in the sense what both the bases this base and this base as well as the curved surface so one base is equal to 2 pi r but there are two bases so that two base areas plus one curved surface area one curved surface area so two base areas are nothing but 2 pi r square and curved surface area just now we derived it that is 2 pi r h ok so totally you can take one 2 pi r common remaining here r and here h so 2 pi r into r plus h is the formula for total surface area r surface area of cylinder right coming to the volume and we discussed in the case of cuboid as well as cube if any solid is having uniform thickness then its volume can be studied as area of the base multiplied by its corresponding height correct see it is having uniform thickness because both of them are two parallel and congruent phases so therefore the volume of this cylinder is going to be base area multiplied by height base area multiplied by height what is the base area area of a circle so which is equal to pi r square multiplied by h so this is what is the formula for volume of cylinder right and of course there are no edges that is why we do not consider uh, it is a uh, diagonal right so this is about the study of cylinder hope you understand let us move on to the next solid what is the next solid yes the next solid is a cone so let us try to understand what do you mean by a cone ok and what are the best examples of cone of course you know very well about cones the best example for cones are ice cream cones that you uh, you know that you eat every day if i am not wrong right so ice cream cones as well as uh, you know when you have some sand ok some quantity of sand and when you pour that sand on the floor when you pour that sand on the floor continuously then you can you can see one cone formed on the floor is not it and that is one example for a cone and you know buffoon cap is an example for a cone and some you can see some tents which can be made in the form of cones so all these are best examples of cones let us try to understand let us try to study about this cone ok so i am drawing a cone see this is one cone and here this is what is the base if you observe the base of the cone is a circle so the base of the cone is a circle and its opposite should be a vertex so by this 
what did you understand about the number of bases it has only one base this is only the base of the cone because this cannot be the base understand so there is only one base of the cone here and the base of the cone should be a circle and whose radius is equal to small r and this is what is called axis of the cone otherwise height of the cone and height of the cone should be perpendicular to the base radius then only it is called right circular cone as like right circular cylinder this is also called as right circular cone otherwise we cannot call it as right circular cones got it so this is a right circular cone we study about right circular cones only right and coming to there is one more particular length if you observe this is one more particular length so this is what the length called if you take one point that is what called vertex of the cone okay so the line segment joining vertex of the cone to any point on the circumference of the base the line segment joining vertex of the cone to any point on the circumference of the base is called slant height what do you call that slant height l stands for slant height slant height of cone okay l is slant height of cone but if you observe there is for example this is o and this is a what kind of triangle v o a is see here v o a is a right angled triangle where angle v o a is equal to 90 degrees then i think we can establish a relationship between l slant height h height of the cone or axis of the cone and r base radius see l is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle so that hypotenuse square equal to side square plus side square right so that l square is equal to h square plus r square if l square is equal to h square plus r square then we can say that l is equal to square root h square plus r square so this is what is the relationship between slant height height and radius of the cone fine we got what is the value of slant height and coming to the areas what is the base area there is only one base and it is which is in the shape of a circle therefore base area of cone is going to be area of circle so area of circle is equal to pi r square fine we got it and coming to the next one curved surface area because the surface lateral surface should be the curved surface for this and the curved surface area of this cone how to identify the curved surface area see i have an idea to identify the curved surface this is a cone you can imagine a cone and if you cut that cone let us consider one empty cone and if you cut that cone along with the slant height then the cone would be like this after cutting it along with the slant height then the shape of that part will be in this what is the shape what do you call this kind of shape yes this is called a sector right so this is the sector of the circle now after cutting it we got this let us try to give the measurements of this cone cone part of this okay this is what the sector right let us give the measurement of this sector so what are the measurements here once you observe when you cut it along with the slant height along with the slant height you can easily identify that it is the slant height okay so this is the slant height this is also the slant height then what about this this is what called length of arc of sector length of arc of sector where did you get it from length of arc of sector that is what called circumference of circle only no so circumference of circle is equal to 2 pi r that is what called length of arc of sector that is 2 pi r so this total length is going to be 2 pi r and you know what is the formula for area of sector area of sector is equal to a is equal to half into length of arc into radius half into length of arc into radius which is going to be half into what is length of arc here length of arc is going to be 2 pi r into radius of the sector means this is what called radius of the sector which is equal to r okay so what is that it is l right sorry it is l then if you cancel 2 and 2 what did you get pi into r into l is going to be pi r l so pi r l 
is the formula for area of the sector area of the sector is nothing but the curved surface area of the cone you understand how did we get the formula for curved surface area of the cone right so curved surface area of the cone is going to be pi r l right but what is l there l is equal to root over h square plus r square so pi r into root over h square plus r square is the formula for curved surface area of the cone right and coming to total surface area otherwise surface area of the cone it is very much simple surface area is nothing but the area of all the faces so one is the base and the second one is the lateral surface okay so base area there is only one base plus lateral surface area or curved surface area base area is equal to pi r square and lateral surface area is going to be pi r l right so when you take pi r common then it would be pi r into r plus l this is the formula for total surface area of cone and coming to the last one what is the last one that is volume of the cone but here definitely we cannot find volume of the cone directly because it is not having uniform thickness the thickness at the bottom is entirely different different from the thickness at the top so then how do we identify the the volume of the cone so in order to identify the volume of the cone there is a very important relationship between a volume of cylinder as well as the volume of cone for example if there is a cone as well as the cylinder having the same base radius and same height it means i am forming one cylinder here okay this is one cylinder and whose height is exactly same as height of the cone as well as the base radius is also same then if the cone as well as the cylinder having the same base radius and same height then volume of cone is equal to one third of volume of cylinder volume of cone is equal to one third of volume of cylinder therefore volume of cone is going to be one third volume of cylinder is equal to pi r square h this is what is the formula for volume of cone so hope you understand if you remember volume of cylinder you can easily remember what is volume of cone hope you understand about this let's move on to the next solid so what is the next solid that you remembered till now we discussed about what is a cuboid and what is a cube and what is a cylinder and what is a cone next going to discuss about the very important thing is a sphere okay what do you mean by a sphere this is what you need to understand first of all of course we know that sphere is a solid object is that enough no not at all so sphere definition is very much close to the definition of a circle what do you mean by a circle circle is the set of points which are equidistant from a fixed point is said to be a circle i repeat a set of points which are equidistant from a fixed point is said to be a circle that is what called the definition of a circle so what do you mean by a sphere let us have a point okay this is what is called the fixed point of course you can call it as an imaginary point and this fixed point and you have um, a certain distance for example 5 cm or 6 cm distance so what are all set of points which are at 5 cm distance from this fixed point in the space in the space i am not telling on the plane in the space so all over all over say this is what is called a sphere understand this is what is called a sphere all over all over so any any direction in the space the set of all the points on the plane set of points set of all the points which are equidistant from this fixed point in the space is said to be a sphere you understand so by the definition of the sphere we can understand one thing what is the base of the sphere so in fact when you 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 can you can take a ball okay you can take a cricket ball otherwise you can take a globe a model of the globe 
or you can have so many objects which, which are in the shape of spheres. When you roll it on the floor then it stops somewhere, but when you observe the base of the sphere then it is very much smaller point there is only one point as the base of a sphere, but that point area is almost negligible. So, that is why we can consider that area of the base of sphere is almost negligible that is why we will not discuss about base area of sphere, but what about the curved surface area or lateral surface area or simply surface area of the sphere. So, surface area of the sphere is equal to 4 pi r square since it is not having uniform thickness okay, and it is not having any plane figure as its faces then its area can be call, uh, calculated by using the concept called integration. So, by using integration we can derive the formula for surface area as well as volume of this volume of this particular figure called sphere. So, you will learn that concept called integration in plus 1 plus 2 or in intermediate. Okay. So, then till now uh, till then you will have to remember what is the formula for the volume of sphere as well as curved surface area total surface area and all. Okay. So, surface area of sphere is going to be 4 pi r square and volume of the sphere is going to be 4 third pi r cube volume of the sphere is equal to 4 third pi r cube. So, please do remember these two things this is about sphere and coming to the next one that is what called half sphere half sphere what is the mathematical name of half sphere that is what called hemisphere what do you call that hemisphere. So, what do you mean by hemisphere or semisphere or half sphere. So, this is half part of the sphere as simple as that see I am taking half part of the sphere. So, this is what called half part of the sphere this is what is the center this is the base radius of course, this is also the base radius. Okay. So, for this half sphere it has a base because base is in the shape of a circle. So, that base area of hemisphere is equal to pi r square and what is curved surface area it has a curved surface area because the remaining part has a curved surface right. So, the curved surface area is nothing but half of the surface area half of surface area is equal to half of 4 pi r square that is 2 pi r square that is curved surface area of hemisphere and what is total surface area or surface area of hemisphere base area plus curved surface area can be studied as the total surface area. So, base area is equal to pi r square plus curved surface area is equal to 2 pi r square pi r square plus 2 pi r square is equal to 3 pi r square is the total surface area of hemisphere and what is volume of the hemisphere of course, volume is half of the volume of the sphere what is volume of the sphere that is 4 third pi r cube. So, 2 ones and 2 twos gets cancelled it is going to be 2 third pi r cube is the volume of hemisphere. So, this is what about all the solids that are given in our CBC curriculum we discussed uh, about their um, base areas if base areas are there and total surface areas and curved surface areas and lateral surface area if diagonals are there we discussed about diagonals as well as we discussed about their respective volumes also. So, please do remember all these formulas and uh, in this topic how best that you can understand the given situation. So, that easily you can answer the problem if you remember all these formulas perfectly hope you understand enjoy the class thank you.